Good morning, uh, fellow patrons and subscribers. I just wanted to uh, sit down in the kitchen with a little morning coffee and check in with you about some stuff. Uh, I'm just going to waffle for a while. This is going to be very free form. Um, I tried it there and then deleted. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to delete this. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to fill you in with uh, what's been happening in the last few days. And because it's part of um, this communion, this social bond that we have, that we're doing, and I want to not only keep you informed, but I want to continue to invite you to be involved in what we're doing. And I should do more of these. It's, it's actually interesting sitting, turning on my computer and, and saying hi, you know. Um, but the reason for this one is because, just to give you a little story to start with um, about me, is for the first decade of my, I almost want to say first decade of my life, uh, I think my life really started in my late teens or 20s. Um, uh, at least my professional life. Uh, that first decade was involved in various ways in trying to create a space that formed a social bond between people. In, in Northern Ireland, it was you know people who had diverse political and religious views, but a, a social bond that where we saw that we were unified in our you know shared struggles and in our shared doubt and in a sense in which we participate in a shared mystery. Uh, and that was ICON. And then I spent a lot of time from my 30s, uh, went to America and really developed the theory of that. And what I really believe is the next decade will be back to developing those spaces of social bond. And they will take some of that stuff that I was doing with ICON and also, but how that's developed over the last 30 years and it's been burning in me for about a year and for whatever reason I haven't pulled the trigger on things sometimes things need to sit and burn sometimes it's uh, that's an excuse and I just was lazy I don't know uh, but a couple of friends um, encouraged me to create some live events and gave me some money to do that last year. And I sat with that money. Um, actually, a, 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 quite a few people offered money, but two people came in and gave me what I needed to set up some events. Um, and I sat with that money for a year, tried a few things, things weren't sitting right. And anyway, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, I put together a group of people and we actually spent the last two days uh, in a little, kind of mostly abandoned church in Belfast, uh, creating a type of liturgy of lack. Uh, I wanted to create, at first it was going to be live events and that's actually where it's going, but two issues. In all honesty at the moment, coming back to Belfast, I just don't have an audience here. So I tried to do some things in Belfast, but it's like, oh, if I want to wait until I can build an audience, a group of people who want to participate in this type of experiment, uh, I could be waiting five years. But also it actually worked out pretty good because at this point what's more important is that I show an example of what this liturgy, this paratheological liturgy might look like. Uh, and I can put that online and I can share that with tens of thousands of people. I mean more than that, but I think quite easily we can get this to thousands and potentially in the tens of thousands of people who can actually see what this church that doesn't yet exist looks like so brought stuff together fear and trembling i i called some good friends who i've worked with in the past and we had duke special uh padre Gutuma, helen rollins johnny McEwen, uh and others uh, who all came together and we spent as i said two full days in the coldest dampest little church you could ever imagine and it's a very cold and wet few days uh, you could see your breath in the place so uh, it took a long time to get the heat back in me when I got home <laughs> and we created a space which it will involve a short film some spoken words some poetry some storytelling some conversation and that will be pulled together into four episodes that 
will have three messages. The fourth is kind of a short film, um, so the, the first three are three messages. And in a nutshell, they are uh, nothing lives, nothing saves, and nothing binds. And I'm playing on the double meaning of nothing. Nothing saves, which sounds like, yeah, nothing saves, but also nothing saves. <laughs> this, this negation that has a salvatory dimension. And I'm calling this Church of the Contradiction, which I didn't realize when I came up with that term uh, is shortened to CCON. So I did ICON for the first decade, and I'm going to be doing, hopefully, CCON for the next decade. So we're going to edit all of that together. It's going to take a while, I mean, maybe a month. And then you'll be the first to see it, and then we'll be spreading this out. And then I would like to raise money to do more of these, and then also to form live liturgies. And the reason for doing that is because, and something I go into in one of the, one of the talks uh, on this event, and I don't talk very much on it, I, I'm very, these are liturgies, so I purposefully am not giving talks. But I did mention how uh, we have this side to us where we often look for something that will make us whole, that will satisfy us, that will remove the suffering, that will make us feel less alone. That's an obvious thing, and if you've been following my work, you feel very comfortable with that idea. Uh, the other part of that is most of us know that there isn't something that will do that, even a partner or, or a commodity or a drug experience, great as they may be, will not get rid of this sense of alienation. At mo maybe moments, and moments of joy, and moments where we feel uh, that that alienation is gone. But we, we kind of know that having a yacht, or a big house, or a great relationship um, isn't going to existentially get rid of the, the trauma that is being human. Right? We know that. So, if we know that, not everybody knows that, um, but as you get older, you kind of know that, right? Um, that's not the issue. So the issue isn't telling people that, because, say, most people know it, and if they don't know it, they will, right? <laughs> that's, life will teach them. Um, the issue is we continue to live as though it's true. We continue to be caught by the lure, even when we don't believe in it. And... This is, this is kind of interesting. So the point of liturgy um, and not university is liturgy, university can teach you things, uh, but liturgy is about inviting you into a different mode of being. And so the idea is that we probably do need a space, not all of us, and not all the time, but it was for many of us a space where once a week we go and we participate in a desert space, uh, a profane temple, I'd like to call it, and I'll be talking about what that means in later, later on in, in my Patreon, but a space where we leave the world of positivity, which means you know you can do it, life hack, seize the day, the, leave the, the world of self-help moving forward, A to B, getting what you desire, etc. And we just have a space where we can be freed from those pursuits, where we can commune with this dimension of mystery and unknowing, and we can experience a grace in which we don't have to do anything. And that space is something that we need. And I'll say one thing about, you know, I mentioned how we can still, we don't believe that having X product will make us happy, but weirdly we still act as if X product will make us happy. The standard view on that is, well, the object doesn't give us anything, you know, anything substantive. Um, but the truth is that it does. Uh, any commodity that you imagine that you think, and not think, but you act as if it will somehow change your life, it promises satisfaction, but it gives you dissatisfaction. Right, it actually gives you dissatisfaction. And if you've been following my work for a while and the uh, work of the thinkers that I'm 
influenced by, you'll know that uh, that's the bit that we're addicted to. And the bit that we're addicted to is precisely the dissatisfaction. We don't know it, but that's, that's where the rub is. But we deny it. We repress that knowledge. The point of the Liturgy of Lack is that we raise that knowledge to the level of our being. We become comfortable with that knowledge. We enjoy our dissatisfaction. And that act is what frees us from these frenetic pursuits. And it's that lack that creates a social bond that connects us to each other. So that's what I've been doing. Say, uh, I've got these four episodes. Uh, for me, it's only the beginning. I want to spend a lot of time in the next year or two talking about the liturgy, encouraging some of you to actually create these yourselves, um, helping you to do that. Uh, and whether it's in Belfast or whether I'm back in LA, uh, I want to also have a space where we're doing this live with people, um, really showing how it's done. So that's what I've been up to. I just wanted to share it because it felt good to be back with some of those people like Padre Gutuma who uh, was part of ICON and Johnny McEwen and, and back working with them. Uh, uh, it was very exciting. Um, so that's coming up. Uh, thank you for your support. And if you're interested in helping out, if you have the resources, the finances, and you want to uh, see, see this move forward, then please let me know. I'm excited to to build this and uh, um, I was amazed how some people immediately just came out and said oh we'll pay to get that done you know because um, it's not easy We're, I'm sitting here with 10 hours of footage I was going to edit it myself and I'm going like no I need it I need someone so Helen's going to edit it but you know people like that I'm going to pay these people paying Podrig and some of them do it for free um, but you know hiring the space all of that so I uh, appreciate the help that's been given in that and say if you want to be part of helping being a patron of the Church of the Contradiction, that's great, but you already are. If you're a patron of mine, you're already supporting it um, because this is my life. And again, on a personal note, uh, this week reminded me uh, that this is why I'm here. This is, this is what um, I want to spend and dedicate my life doing. Um, uh, that's that's it, that's who I am. And um, it's exciting to be part of that. And I really appreciate that you're a part of that. This is still a very small thing, um, but it's growing. All right, have a great day, bye-bye.